Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. First, I have to say thank you to the hundreds of emails and texts I got on our show uh, from Russia. But I have to admit something to you, and for those of you who asked me about all that vodka that I drank on the show, it was not real vodka. So I, I, did, uh, I did that only because I felt it was setting the scene for what we were doing in Russia. Today's show is going to be very, very special and a much more serious topic. We're going to be talking about medical marijuana, uh, not just here in Hawaii, but around the world. And I'm so fortunate that we have a guest on Skype with us from Pennsylvania. His name is Dr. Philip Kim, and uh, he will introduce himself and he will tell us about all the research that, that he has completed, not just on medical marijuana, but on medical marijuana and the ailments that he has worked with. So uh, there has been a tremendous lack of information when it comes to doctors knowing what's going on, patients understanding what's going on. We've all heard about medical marijuana becoming the, the, the cure-all for all sorts of diseases and who knows, is it just like the nutraceutical business where nobody knows what's happening? Dr. Kim has the answers for us. But before we get to Dr. Kim, I want to say hello to Irma. Hi, hello. Irma. Oh, hi. Thank you for having me. You introduced me to Dr. Kim. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for doing that. But My before that, uh, you and I met through our Make Him Smile, Make him smile. affiliation. Yes, yes. And that's where your daughter, Skyler, mm -hmm. uh, was a patient at Capulani Hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we came to play music for her. You did, yes. And so Skyler's been in and out of the hospital for different reasons. Um, in 2009, she was diagnosed with a very rare autoimmune disease, HLH, uh, hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, of which she spent a month in the hospital. About two and a half years later, she was diagnosed with systemic lupus erythematosus, of which you usually just get one class, one type of lupus, but she apparently has two. So managing the uh, her immune system is, is quite the juggling act. And we have monthly clinics. She gets infusions. Uh, she's done six months of chemotherapy. But at the moment, she's feeling good. She's in remission. And we were grateful that we got to meet you and your team because Skylar loves music. And we saw the tangible impact that it had on our healing and continued healing. So well, thank you. I just saw her a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this young lady, she's almost 15 now. She turned 15, yeah. 15, 15 mm -hmm. and she is so full of life. Even though <laughs> she has all these medical issues still within her, she still understands how important living life is every single yes, day. Yes, she does. She which, does. Which I think it's marvelous. She does. Thank you. Irma, I mentioned to you that I wanted to open up a rehab center here in yes. Hawaii. And I said to you that I felt the, the medical marijuana community in Hawaii should support the rehab center. Now whether, and you know, we could talk about this all day, but this is a short program. So uh, whether marijuana is a, um, a uh, gateway drug or not is a question that doctors can answer, mm -hmm. or maybe we'll, we'll answer today, I mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I said that to you, I was so impressed that you immediately knew a lot of the licensees. You were able to direct me to Kauai and to Justin and to Jason. Mm -hmm. And these guys are in the middle of doing what they're doing mm -hmm. in the medical marijuana community here on this island. I'm, I'm very well acquainted mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of research for, the, uh, for one of the licensees in Israel to be able to help them understand what Israel has done. Right. But more important than that, all of a sudden I get a call from you Seymour, I have this friend, Dr. Philip Kim, mm -hmm. who lives in Pennsylvania, who is doing an amazing amount of research. And thanks to you, I was able to meet Philip and start talking about uh, what we need to do for physicians to understand where medical marijuana fits in. Right. And right now, the physicians I have spoken to, even my brother, who's a doctor, mm -hmm. uh, he, they really don't know. There's such a lack of education. Right. And when I saw the passion that Philip has, Which for, has. What, mm -hmm. for what his business is all about, mm -hmm. I said, my God, that is the kind of guy we need to educate a lot of, not just the marijuana community, but our educators, our patients, mm -hmm. our physicians, and our government officials who have to regulate this right. business. Right, right. So we're going to welcome Philip. Philip, can you come on with us, please? Yes. There you are. Hi, Philip. Welcome, hi. How you welcome doing? to Hawaii. Hi. Hi, Philip. 
Now, Good. the first question I have to ask you, how's the weather in Pennsylvania? Not as good as Hawaii, but it's nice. a nice day today. It's, a, it's a, um, Indian summer today, about 70 degrees, very good. little humidity, but it's, it's great. Good, good. Uh, well, here in Hawaii, I, I always tell everybody the weather is very boring. You know, it's 80, <laughs> 85, it's sunny, the trade winds are blowing. Uh, you know, just come and visit. Don't come to stay because we have enough people here. <laughs> yes. But, Philip, we want to talk about what you are doing. So yes. please uh, give us a short introduction. I know you have eight clinics, yes. uh, and your your specialty is in pain management, if if I'm correct. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Seymour and Irma, uh, I've been um, I'm a pain specialist. I'm an anesthesiologist that's full time pain. I've been doing it since I, I left my residency and fellowship in 2002. I was a professor at UPenn for a few years, and then I went to private practice and, and developed a corporation called Center for Inventual Pain and Spine. This is a practice we've grown to about five doctors or eight offices in the Delaware, Pennsylvania area. And what we do is we, we are basically treat patients with chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And chronic pain has, has been difficulty for many years with the reality that we have patients and we're not able to fix them. I'd love to be able to fix people, but the reality is a lot of people have conditions which are chronic that are lasting them for a long period of time. And so this process has developed as a, as a specialty that will allow doctors in the area to come send us patients. And we do that on a regular basis for all these patients, but we offer many options, whether it's surgery, it's new invasive techniques, medications. We try to do a very multidisciplinary approach for patients to help with their condition. And, and part of the, the thing that we've also seen is we also have developed also an integrated medical practice, which kind of incorporates with the patients with chronic pain and illness overall. And to me, this has been our passion in our practice, help patients with chronic pain. And so we get the patients that people, the doctors send us to that feel and everything else. And then we have options we offer patients. And so for us, the medical marijuana made a lot of sense for us. We have a lot of patients that have these conditions that we try and help with. You know, that's, a, that's such a, a wonderful short description of it, but I wanna go into a little bit more detail. Uh, medical marijuana itself has been used for uh, many, many years in Europe and Israel where I studied it. And I, I, I feel that we need people to understand that it's not just smoking pot that, yes. that, that, that works. Could you explain how you use marijuana for different types of ailments? Yes. It all comes to the understanding that we're now identified, and this all comes from Israel in terms of understanding their receptors and the mechanism, how our body has natural cannabinoid in a system that will allow marijuana to work. And the term is medical. Medical marijuana, we understand there are ingredients and, and aspects of the plant itself that can help control conditions. Particularly in chronic pain, chronic ailments can be very helpful. And for me, medical marijuana fits with the idea that the, in our practice, we have a, a, a big issue overall with pain medications, trying to find different options and limitations in what's available. And the idea that we have now a new class of medication, a new concept which helps patients is huge. Because we are dealing with an issue in our practice and our frustration has always been on the opioid issues, addiction problems, misuse, overdose. And we all have personal experiences in our lives. I've had patients have these problems and we're always looking for an option. And for the last 10 years or so, we are starting to identify with the research in Israel in the Netherlands, in Canada, which shows that this makes, can make a difference for patients. And that to me is where we have now hit into a, a growth period, understanding that we have a lot of patients with chronic pain, a lot of patients on opioids. We have now means of, of giving them other solutions beyond just those medications alone. So if you're looking at um, um, heroin addicts or yes. uh, uh, all types of opiate addicts, are you saying that medical marijuana could be a way to uh, uh, to weed them off it, or is it something to be used to to live with what they're doing? How how does medical marijuana help them? Well, it's a concept that we have now another class of medicines. If the patients who are using this for pain, for their suffering, to give them some quality of life, now we have another means of controlling that without the effects of the opioids, and heroin is one of them, as as you know. And I believe that in many ways, marijuana is, is in many ways safer than the opioids and, 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 and heroin. And, and also believe that it means a good quality of life. Um, and that to me is where 
we fit with the medical marijuana. We want more choices for our patients. Right. Now, how, uh, how do you compare it to methadone or to Suboxone? Well, there are different classes. Methadone and Suboxone are types of opioids that we use. Suboxone is a mix of, of, of an opioid we use for addiction uh, relief. But we also know those components of methadone can be helpful for pain as well. But they're very different because methadone itself is an opioid. Mm -hmm. Some benefits and also some side effect issues. Why is it taking the federal government so long to legalize medical marijuana? It comes with the history, and I hope that in our next presentation we have a chance to go through some history of medical mar uh, marijuana in the United States and the, and the world. But it comes to the fact that there has been an ongoing process since the 1930s on the concerns about using marijuana for recreational use. And that's really kind of muddied or clouded the sensation that realize that there are benefits for the, for the medication. There are benefits of marijuana we're not seeing because of our past history of this in the last few decades. So is it, is it a feeling in your mind that what the, what, especially here in the U.S., that everybody is looking as medical marijuana as basically a gateway towards recreational marijuana to the selling of, of actual marijuana for people who do not need it for medical purposes? Yes and no. I don't believe that there are legitimate people out there, um, including company, that are looking to use as recreational. There may be a future and the policymakers and the states are going to go on this and if that's the way it's going to be. But I believe the emphasis and, and this company and, and, and everyone that is involved with marijuana wants to help with patients, wants to give the patients that are suffering with chronic pain and illness some other solutions than we we'll currently have available right now. So what, what studies and policies need to be implemented right now to make this happen? Well, there's actually a lot of studies that have come about, but it's not in the United States. The, the issues about marijuana are such that, that now we've identified, and thanks to the Israeli physicians and, and scientists that found how the receptors are located, how the mechanism works in our own bodies, these types of uh, endocannabinoids. These are basically the, the types of, of chemicals that naturally release in our bodies to give us life and, and function in our bodies. We now know there are means which we can add medicines from the marijuana plant. The fight we'll call phytocannabinoids that can help patients with these conditions. That can help them with the pain, help them perhaps get off opioids, give them some life other than what we have right now currently available. So do you feel the responsibility uh, of the dispensaries around the country uh, is to educate the patient who walks in the door or should the patient be educated before he walks in the door? I believe the patient should be educated before they walk into the door. Which is what they do in Israel. Correct. And I believe the patients should not only get self-educated themselves, but I also believe the medical field, particularly the physicians, need to get on a path to understand the system that exists outside the United States and be able to offer this at some level for patients. And I believe that's what the concept of medical marijuana is all about. We have plenty of patients that have chronic pain in this country, plenty of patients are on medication to help control the symptoms, they're not getting the best effect. And this is where medical marijuana can play a role for our patients. What about quality control, Philip? I mean, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of dispensaries in Canada, in Colorado, in California, Washington, etc. And I mean, there's so much stuff out there. How do we know it's what it's supposed to be? You remember, you know, at one point, vitamin this was supposed to be great for you, then they find out it's not great for you. Where, where are we with the, with the actual medical marijuana quality control? Well, the medical marijuana quality control is a very important question. I'm glad you brought that up. Because we are starting to realize that just like the, the, the nutraceutical business, just like the agricultural business, whether it's with um, the growth of, of, of wine through, through the grapes, there is a means of regulating and controlling this to be safe for patients. And that's the first part about this whole regulation and development is we've got to make sure the product is safe. We've got to make sure it's free of pesticides, chemicals, and also stability of the medication, also proper controls and what's actually in it is, is in it. And that to me is what quality control I believe is about. And in one essence, it's, it's a great plan, but we have to make sure for the masses we do this properly and make it safe for patients uh, for many reasons. What type of training procedures do you see necessary from you as a supplier uh, to, the, to the physician who is going to prescribe it? 
the, the whole process has to be one, I believe, about educating the physicians, the, the medical field, to tell them medical marijuana is here and it does have a basis. It does have a basis on current research in basic science, current research in the clinicals. And granted, I agree with most of my colleagues in this field, there's a lot more research need to be done. We also have to understand it's, it's just not about medical marijuana that we have to explain to patients. Also to make sure that it stays in the, in the patients, stays with the patients, and it gives them some quality of life. And, and the biggest part about this educating the, the physicians, have them know what's available. Yes, we do need more clinical studies. We do need to deregulate, give us more abilities to do these studies, to really understand this full impact, full benefit for patients. Wow. Uh, Philip, we have to take a break, but I'm, I'm sitting here on pins and needles with about 20 more questions, and I'm getting calls from, from people who have been watching the show and want to ask you questions. So we're going to come back after the break, and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of marijuana and what uh, your company, Cannabis Inc., is doing. Uh, I understand you have several locations, correct? Yes. So uh, what, what you're doing on the research side, I'm much more interested in how you're going to make sure that the proper uh, medication of medical marijuana is administered to the patient. That, to me, yes. is a very important piece. So, uh, I want to uh, take a break. I need, I need some water, and I hope you do too, and we will come back to Seymour's World in a moment. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I serve as Senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi, and you can catch me on Mondays at 11 on ThinkTech Hawaii. Stacy to the rescue. See you then. Hello, huh? How you doing? It's me, Angus McTech. Wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on Think Tech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to seeing you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. Hi, welcome to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky, my guest Irma Baptiste. Thank you. And our guest on Skype is Dr. Philip Kim in Pennsylvania. Hi, Philip. Welcome back. Hi. Good one. Boy, that first uh, segment was pretty intense because it's, it, you know, we're trying to wrap uh, our hands okay. around this medical marijuana issue. And I know as, a, as a, not an investor, by the way, but as somebody who wants to use the medical marijuana licensees to help fund my rehab center, I have yes. to make sure they understand that this is such a, a medical issue. So yes. before we get to our slides, one quick question. Uh, the, the, me the medical marijuana that you're using, are you testing it individually for different ailments or are you testing it as a general pain relief? Both. That's, that's kind of the controversy about this. I mean, we, we've, been, we've known and utilized actually synthetic types of cannabinoids or drenabinol for, for nausea, vomiting, we also use it for pain. I've used this for 10 years for patients who are conditions in the United States. But I believe the plant itself is not just one ingredient, it's multiple ingredients that have value for us as, as clinicians for patients. And so that's gonna be the, the crux of the future of the research, is to identify all the ingredients, all things that have value for patients, and then really kind of hone in what makes sense for patients. But see, in medicine, we're in the, in the mind of trying to find the, the magic bullet for these patients. The reality is it may not be one bullet. It actually may be the shotgun approach within the plant itself that may benefit for patients. And that's kind of the, the real issue that I'm interested in in terms of the research and the plans. I, and I know that a lot of good investigators in the United States are starting to look at that as an approach for patients. All right, cool. All right, we want to show some of the history of that's marijuana right. and, uh, and where it's going. So I'm going to ask Zuri to bring up the first slide, which shows uh, medical marijuana is here in Pennsylvania. Now, do you, do you have a license there in Pennsylvania for medical marijuana? No, the, the license in Pennsylvania is still in process. Okay. Uh, as of April of this year, it got approved by the governor, but it's still in process. And, okay. 
Uh, and how many licensees will be in Pennsylvania? As far as I know, because I, I really kind of really deal with the more of the medical issues yep. for the company. Yep. But I believe there's about five um, okay. licenses that will probably get out for the state. All right. The next slide is uh, the, talks about the world history of cannabis. Does it really go back that far? Into oh, the it goes back 10,000 years. Really? And if you look over to the right, you see actually the symbol, the Chinese symbol for the cannabis plant, right. or the right and left. Right. It's going down 10,000 years in history of this. You know, the whole thing about the history of marijuana is not just China. India had it. In, 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 in Africa, they had it. And they know that this was around for, for, for centuries. The Romans, the Romans used it. The Greeks used this. I mean, this to me got, got, it, it has amazing history. If you read about it, it's just fascinating. That's what got me interested in this. And then on top of it, it got introduced by the Spanish in 1545. There is a, a very famous... Irish physician, Dr. William Brooke O'Shaughnessy, that brought this up from, from Europe also to the United States. And that's what got really introduced. But it's, it's more than just that I give you some basic key points in history. There's more to this than, than, than I, I've shown in this slide. I'm very, I'm very glad that you are showing this slide, Phil, because I go to China quite often, and you know they believe in very natural products. And, yes. and I know that there, uh, they still use cannabis Yes. in China as a as a treatment for all sorts of illnesses. I don't think it's documented enough for our FDA standards, but at the same time, it yes. is part of treatment. Let's yes. see the next slide. So this <laughs> this uh, shows uh, marijuana or marijuana, I think you called it. Yes. Uh, weird orgies, wild parties. Go ahead. Yes. So what it, you're seeing right there is actually what happened with this and, and the whole process is um, that in marijuana, we had a, a, a ruling in 1937 called medical U.S. Marijuana Act, Task Act. And the purpose of this was there's a guy by the name of Dr., not Dr., but uh, Henry Asinger, who was a head drug star at the time that felt that marijuana had a, a, a history and felt that, it, that this was a drug which was used to basically get high. It was a drug used to, to uh, to have orgies, have these parties, this is what that slide's all about. Yeah. And this is the sad part about this. This led to our current scenario in the United States with marijuana as a recreational drug. But what, what's very interesting about this at the time frame was there are a lot of doctors who were totally against this in terms of the ruling against marijuana at that time. Hmm. The Marijuana Tax Act was, was basically an act where you got charged, got a dollar, I believe, for trying to prescribe it or even dispense medication, which basically economically stopped the, the trade. <laughs> but there are doctors at the time, uh, Dr. Um, William Osler, Dr. Shaughnessy, that really felt that it was had that value. And they, they, because they knew the history in generations before this actually came to the United States. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately what happened and then it led in 1942, marijuana to be removed off the U.S. Farm Appeal, basically it's a compendium that would, um, would be officially the, the, the drugs that, that would be allowed for use for, for medical use in the country. Mm -hmm. Then in 1970, marijuana got be classified by the uh, FDA as a class one base of med. It was unlawful and you could not use this drug at all based on, on those laws. Well, we're looking at your slide called National, which shows what has happened over the last yes. couple of years in August of 2013 and December yes. of 2014. Right. And of course, we all know that it is still an illegal substance yes. in the U.S. and that makes uh, doing business selling marijuana and growing marijuana a very difficult procedure. And that's not something we want to talk about today. Let's see the next slide. That's the U.S. states with medical marijuana. So that's, yes. a, that's amazing. I didn't realize there were that many already. Yes, so about 24 states, uh, as we count. And the ones in green are the ones that have some, some type of law for medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. That, to me, it, it is impressive over the, the last few years and over the decade. We started to see this. Because I believe the information that is coming from this program and any programs is now starting to see that people are understanding its history, its benefits, and we're already starting to realize that everyone's seeing what I've seen in my practice. We've got a lot of patients with chronic illness, chronic pain, and now with the opiate epidemic, we're starting to realize maybe the patient can be helped with another type of, of, of medication. Mm -hmm. Philip, I, we have so much more to cover. This is my most important slide. Please explain this one. Potential therapeutic uses. 
Yes. Has this, now, is this proven when you say potential? Have you used it for a lot of these uh, uh, disorders, illnesses? Now, this, these are potential therapies that, that we know have been identified through international studies. And a lot of this is also based on some basic studies in terms of with the animals and preclinical studies. We also have some clinical case reports, clinical studies, trials, which show that these are conditions, the first one I have right here, are, are potential benefits. And, and to me, this is where we understand, now we understand the system, and now we understand the whole mechanism of how the medications work. Now we're starting to identify different conditions. And a lot of the conditions you're seeing here are chronic ailments that we, we suffer, or a lot of patients suffer, not only in just the United States, but also in the world. I think this is where medical marijuana will make a big difference for patients in the future. Wonderful. Now we've got to, we only have a couple of minutes and I do want to ask you a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, the, the, the research labs, uh, there's been talk about we don't have enough research labs. What are you doing about it or what do you suggest we do? It's a tough question because what's unfortunate because of, the, of this classification, it's very difficult to get funding and research. Just as, a, as an issue for an investigator like myself, you have to get investigate. You have to get an, uh, um, a review board to evaluate the, the, the validity of the study. Get it done, but you also need funding. And if you're restricted by the federal government, it's very hard to get research money to do the proper studies. What is your opinion, Philip? How long before the federal government says okay? Well, they already have okayed it to a point. And the recent ruling just a few months ago was the FDA was going to try to allow more research to be done for for, for medical uh, reasons. And I believe that's going to be the future of the bill is to allow more researchers to do more of the studies, more evidence to show its benefit for patients, more evidence to show what can help overall, and also to worry about the concerns that people have laid with the, with the potential use for adolescents, the, uh, the issues concerned to possibly for addiction issues. There's a lot out there we need to learn about, and we're learning as we go through this, but we like the ability to do more research. And I believe the next few years people are going to start to benefit from marijuana and we'll find it, its its use in, in our therapies i thank you so much philip i'm so sorry i want to continue this conversation and i may ask you to come back on the show again if you don't mind but I'm unfortunately our 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 time is limited and you have done such a great job of explaining where we are with with medical marijuana the best i have ever seen and that's after two or three years of working on it so thank you thank you so much.